What is the deal, y'all? JR the AR here, here with Colorblind Entertainment, and we are back with the Colorblind Podcast. Today, I have an interview that I am very intrigued to see how it goes, honestly. Uh, man's been in the headlines for the past couple months, uh, and the reason I tapped in with him originally is because I found out not only is he a San Diego native, but we actually went to the same high school. So uh, I'm happy to have my boy, the man, the myth, the legend, Twisty P. What's the deal, my boy? What up? What up? Stoked to be here. Thank you. No problem. No problem. I'm glad to have you, man. And um, there, <laughs> there's so much to cover, but I want to start from like the very, very beginning. A lot of people don't know you're from San Diego. Um, tell me what your early years were like. Like, what was it like at home? Um, shoot, it was kind of just me and my mom. Uh, grew up in downtown 1050 B Street. Um, being what? Because I used to stay on like Fifth and Ash. 1050 B Street, just like near the Burger King in oh, downtown okay. near yeah. San Diego High School. I know exactly what uh, you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stayed there with my little Chihuahua. And uh, yeah, those were the early years. I was just kind of kicking it. And then I ended up moving to Point Loma and I started playing baseball out there, made the all star team. How old were you when that happened? Um, I was around like 13, 14. And then, um, yeah. That was pretty much my early years, just making all-star teams, playing at East Lake High School as well. And, uh, yeah, that's when I went into Mission Bay High School. Uh, what I got, got you transferred from, like, East Lake to Mission Bay? I started hitting with uh, Coach Starkey. He was, like, a hitting coach at the time, and we were hitting together at the Mission Bay batting cages. And, uh, yeah. That's fire. That's fire. Yeah. Uh, what – did you love about baseball that kept you into it so long because like before all the shit people know about you like that was your bread and butter yeah yeah yeah, for sure um baseball is kind of like one of those things where it was like a life sport for me i uh like if you know baseball it's like a life thing like baseball you can uh, you can compare life to baseball um just like strike through you're out kind of thing and yeah so Hitting home runs, kind of like making hits on the on the tracks and stuff. So. And you were pretty nice, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was playing shortstop. So. Okay. Yeah. Were any colleges looking at you? Yeah, I had a couple colleges: uh, Oregon State and uh, San Diego State for football as well. And uh, yeah. Okay, so you're just switching off on sports between, yeah. between the seasons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my senior year, I got to like really um, get good at like playing both baseball and football. Um, yeah so okay and why didn't you end up going to either of the colleges because it seems like you were like a top prospect at the time from the research i did um just i i went to a junior college is uh college of southern nevada um ended up not working out there so i went to wabash valley College. those were top 10 uh junior colleges at the time for baseball okay and uh yeah. Uh, were just, you in the dorms or were you having to figure it out? And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, I stayed in the dorms for and sure. And how was that? Were you like, uh, it was, it was cool at the time. Um, uh, my teammates weren't really on the best track, but I was focused in running sprints. Uh, were, were, did yeah. they embrace you or would you say you were kind of an outcast on the team? Uh, I was definitely kind of an outcast for sure because <laughs> I was focused on my hard work at the time and I didn't really like the party scene, especially Vegas and stuff. So, Okay, yeah. I can imagine that. Like, yeah. But I really want to know when the switch flipped. Like, when did everything change for you? Because I know there had to be, like, some defining moment. Yeah. Where you uh, were like, I'll definitely baseball shit's cool, but I want to explore other things. Yeah, yeah. Um, shoot, when did the switch flip? I mean, there was really no switch for me. I just kind of figured it out along the way. I figured out, like, a... You know, I figured out TikTok and stuff, and I was just like, shoot, this could be, like, a little thing, a little career for me. It's pretty fun, you know. I like putting myself out there. And What age like did that. you start TikTok? Like, were you doing baseball concurrent with TikTok, or did you nah. drop TikTok and then hop on? I yeah, mean, drop yeah. baseball and hop on TikTok. Yeah, I actually took a break from baseball, and then I started to get on, like, social media and stuff. I was always, like um, – in high school, I would always, like, be on Instagram and stuff, just looking at, like, the SoundCloud rappers that were coming up at the time. And I always dig, like, listening to SoundCloud rap while I was playing baseball and stuff. So everything kind of meshed this? together. Because I'm trying to think of who you might have been listening to during that time. Um, this was, like, junior year of high school. 
junior year, senior year of high school, um, sophomore year of high school when I was playing football, like we would play Lincoln and um, yeah, like when I was at Mission Bay. So okay, yeah. and who are you listening to at that time? Shoot, I was a. Uh, I'll listen to like Wally the Sensei, O3 Greedo, um, Draco, a lot of a lot of West Coast rap for sure. For that sure. is not what I expected you to say. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. like with, what a lot of people know you from, they yeah. usually don't know that you were so entranced in the West Coast shit. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. when I first like looked at your page, I looked at who you were following, and you were not only following my artists from San Diego, but you right. were following like five other rappers from san diego and you right, right, right. Like less big in the people. san diego scene for sure set these smack to actually went to uc high school and i went to uc high school as well so that's crazy that was awesome yeah you seem to like have ties in every little facet of san diego like you went yeah. to mission bay for a minute that's how we have our ties you went to yeah. uc that's how you know sethy you went to yeah. uc that's i went you know to albert einstein so. academies as well and, and albert einstein academy what fucking yeah. school is that worth? that was uh that was down there in uh South Park, yeah. When I was like a little kid and stuff, so I learned German and stuff. And you can cry. German, uh, yeah. Ich habe, some German shit. Ich habe vergessen Deutsch. <laughs> I forgot German, so <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of one of those things you have to practice. But I feel you. I feel you. But uh, who are some of the other San Diego rappers you're fucking with right now? Um, definitely Lil Weirdo, Lil Maru, um, Young Rich Six One Nine, um, for sure. Um, Twenty Two G Fe for sure. Basically, all the Dago scene. Um, yeah, those guys kind of hold it down, definitely. So, yeah, I say you mentioned like the three or four who really had the city on lock, like weirdos going crazy. Maru just got his situation with Simply Stupid. Uh, yeah. You, I just played you a lot of G's album. That's yeah, 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 for so sure, for sure. You already know what's up. Yeah. So, um, definitely yeah, shouts think, out to those guys. Yeah. Huge respect to those guys. I think there's more potential for someone to pop out of the city now. Yeah, like, yeah, ever. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So to like, I'm first. See at the gang, I, Yabby. See oh, the cannot gang, forget about Keek. Yabby and Keek yeah. and them. Keek, Feeny, yeah. the whole G gang. Yeah, man. yeah. Like, there's so much like hidden talent that needs to be showcased at a higher scale. For sure. So that's why I just thought it was super dope when I saw you like off rip already yeah. racing these fools. You yeah, know? it wasn't just the SoundCloud scene that I was already messing with. It was basically, um, I kind of got into rap just due to the fact that I loved like San Diego rappers and stuff. So. That's cool. fire. Who were you listening to in the beginning? Like, probably like Sethi Schmack. And yeah, like Lil that. Weirdo. Yeah, No Cosign and stuff. So, yeah. okay, back in the day. Yeah, that song has like six million plays now. Yeah, it goes crazy. Those fools do numbers. Hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. But um, when did you start going crazy on TikTok? Like, were your TikToks always lit, or was it kind of like mid, like kind of bullshit at first, and you had to scale up for it to be any half decent type shit? Um. I think it, I noticed when I started getting like reposted by like, um, like Can Can and stuff and all those guys, like all the SoundCloud rappers that I was basically messing around with, like, um, yeah. So how long did that take? Um, didn't actually take that long. I think I was at like eight thousand followers when I got reposted on Twitter by Can Can, and he compared me to Drewski with my like funniness. I don't think I'm up there yet, but you know, it's pretty cool like to get reposted by one of those guys. Not for sure. Yeah. Um, explain to me what happened when they flew you out. Or you flew oh, yeah. Out. Uh, when I went to Houston, I was actually expecting to go to the studio with, like, Reno and Summers, uh, same person. But, um, yeah, I actually ran into Jace and Can Can. And, uh, yeah, I just got jumped by them. So. And you had intended to, like, kick it with them while you were out there? Yeah, right? I intended to, like, hang out with them and make some music and stuff. And desire and bz and all those guys but yeah and then right after that you went crazy yeah like that's the thing i've known about noticed about you you kind of remind me of like a pisces but like the highest version of a pisces <laughs> to where you're chill up until yeah. you're not and when you're not yeah, yeah, you're yeah. on some bullshit yeah 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 I agree. so like i was just curious like overall like with everything going on like what percent would you think it's just like people kind of taking advantage of your kindness because i think there's a lot of that People yeah. taking advantage of your kindness and kind of like naivety to situations. And how much do you think is kind of like you putting yourself in situations that you don't need to be in? Uh, I think a lot of the times is me putting myself in situations I really shouldn't be in. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say it's like 70, 30, I guess, 30 percent being taken advantage of or yeah. 
I appreciate sure. you being able to take accountability for it yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah, Cause for like, sure. I don't know, like. I definitely don't. I definitely despise that way I came up because I noticed a lot of like rappers. They have like a sick come up. You know, there's a lot of people that have like cool come ups and stuff. And then my come up is kind of like ah, just like a bunch of BS. You know, happening to me. So. But it's all yeah. about just like how you move forward past. Yeah, that yeah, for sure. You know for what sure. I mean? Like for sure. You have to look at like someone like Six Nine. Like yeah, he's a rat now, but before he snitched and like went to jail and all that shit. Yeah. He had somehow been able to rebrand and become like a twenty times selling platinum artist. Yeah, that's what I definitely being a fucking yeah. alleged sex offender. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So like that was just like the biggest testament that if you really apply yourself, you can change the perception that people have of you. Yeah. But I it's agree. going to take time and it's gonna take consistency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I've been stressing with you since I've met you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause when we first linked, I was like, yo, this guy isn't like a lunatic, like he can yeah. have a coherent conversation. <laughs> like yeah, we have yeah, similar yeah. interests. Like, yeah. I feel like if you're not put in situ- certain situations or if you're not instigated once you act in certain ways, because anytime you've acted funny where it could have went south, yeah, I just like nipped it right there in the bud because like I want the best for people. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I've remember back in the day when I used to be the butt of the joke and that's not fun for anyone. Yeah, so no, just like, not at all. I hope moving forward that one, people take you more seriously. Oh yeah, for sure. Little shit like this. For sure. And two, that you can carry yourself in a manner that people won't feel like they can just get an easy one on you. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because, bro, when you FaceTimed me after that no jumper shit, yeah. I was worried about you. Yeah, I was like, pretty bro, bloody and stuff. FaCETIME me blood like, leaking out his mouth like, yeah, nigga, real <laughs> Dago shit. Yeah, son. And it's just like, bro, like, that could have went even more so. Yeah, um, for sure. Can you explain, like, your thought process, like, while that was going down? Uh, I definitely think that was, like, a manic episode just due to um, just being triggered, I guess. And, yeah, um... This is a manic episode, I guess. If you know what a manic episode then is, then I guess that's what it is. Has that something you've struggled with in the past? Uh, yeah, just due to the fact that, like, when I was playing baseball, I always had to focus, like, real hard on um, just, like, the nitpicky things of, like, um, focusing on the pitcher's hat when you're about to hit or, uh, like, when the ball comes through, you want to pick up on his hand and stuff like that. And those are, like, really nitpicky things that could, like, mess with you, I guess. Yeah. In Did you ever take any hits while you were playing baseball? Yeah, I got hit in the face my senior year. I actually seized and, yeah, and fractured part of my nose and my face. And I was out for a couple games and, yeah. Damn. Yeah. You went to the hospital and all that? Yeah, I was, my teammates visited me and stuff. And, yeah. Damn, was there any, like, long-term damage? that? No, no, no. Not anymore, but, yeah. Definitely my senior year, yeah. It was a pretty crazy experience. Damn, bro. Yeah. You've really done some living. <laughs> yeah. I've had a couple of concussions when I used to play on the Coastal Tritons. Um, like What's in the worst grade. injury you've had through sports? Um, definitely the seizure in my senior year of high school. That was pretty crazy. Yeah, it's kind of hard to top a seizure. Yeah. Um, twiz. What does that word mean to you? Twiz? Um, shoot, I guess it's me. Um, yeah, it's just me. Um, twiz, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I think Yeet coined the term, and yeah, you were. He started off with it for sure, for sure. Yeah. So when you first heard it, like, what made it resonate with you? Like, what made Yeet resonate with you in the first place? Because you just told I me think, you listened to Wally, O3, and Draco. Yeah. And you're known for being a fucking Yeet fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for sure. what captured you about that fool? Um, I think how fast he came up. And then uh, just, like, the sound was, like, very different. Um, something that I wasn't really used to. I was, like, sound SoundCloud listener. Um, I thought it was pretty special. So, yeah. And I think a lot of people agreed because yeah. he's blowing all these other SoundCloud kids out of the water besides maybe, like, Sofago. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe Cochise. Cochise yeah. is doing really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I saw him on the XXL list. I listened to his music. He's not bad at all. Yeah. Um, are there any other other SoundCloud niggas that you really fuck with? Um, shoot. 
I mean, I feel like I pretty much capped them off that I that I listen to mainly that I can put their songs on repeat for sure. Not even SoundCloud niggas, just like underground niggas, like a Baby Tron, for example. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby Smooth, I like Baby Smooth as well. Baby Smooth, yeah. Baby Face Ray, all the babies. Yeah, are Baby cold. Face Ray as well. Yeah, yeah. And like you know that Detroit scene, that's what I hope San Diego starts building into. Oh yeah, next, for like, sure. Two years because people we have start the to talent m- to mesh together and stuff. That stuff could really take off and then. You know, it'd be like a new SOB almost. Yeah, and you like see that. little pieces of it, like with KT4 yeah. and yeah. the Sugar Free shit. Like, yeah, yeah, that if goes crazy. We keep having like viral hits like that, and then people keep working together, and the momentum builds on top of each other. We could yeah. really have like a really strong straight scene out here. Yeah. So like that is my goals and hopes for the f- future of San Diego hip hop, and yeah. uh, I'm really really happy that you support it. Um, for sure, for sure, you never catch me disrespecting those guys at all. Those guys, I look up to all them, especially everyone in the Dago scene. Nah, bro, you pulled yeah. up to the fucking school tour with me, G yeah. and Maru. That was sick. Yeah, all the kids were showing love. That was awesome. That was like a thousand kids in a parking lot. That was, was a crazy, lot of people. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, the homie's car got fucked up. Like yeah. those kids were banging on it, scratching it up. Two kids hit it They're with going a sharpie, crazy. bro. They were tagging it. <laughs> like it was bad. <laughs> but um, one uh, last thing I wanted to talk about before we get out of here is um. Do you want to explain the merch situation to your fans? Because I feel like you haven't oh, yeah, had for a sure. place to really explain what happened from your perspective. Yeah. A lot of people are really fucking mad at you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've been, like, literally sitting with you while part of this has been going on. So I want yeah, you to be able yeah, to yeah. at least speak your piece. So, um, uh, I definitely apologize to all my fans that didn't receive their merch. Um, that actually had nothing to do with me. I've called the people in Fresno that had to, that dealt with the merch um they never got back to me i called them multiple times i've told them that lawyers were going to be involved and never yeah never received my merch so it's kind of a bummer that a lot of kids didn't really get to like support me i mean they supported me but um i didn't receive any financial anything from that so you didn't make a dollar off of this no i didn't make a dollar off of it it wasn't connected to your accounts no not at all I can actually confirm that yeah. all payment methods were not yeah. accessible to Twisty. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, I wanted you to at least be able to say that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know. I've seen that be a real stressor on you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I don't know. People deserve some clarification on some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How's the music going? Uh, it's it's pretty good. I record myself at home. I I like going to the studio a lot because um, it's a lot different than recording yourself at home. Um, yeah, just being at the studio is a whole another experience. So most definitely. Yeah, maybe you get back into baseball soon as well. Um, yeah, you never know what, what could what could happen. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you said you called me like four days ago and said you wanted to get back into baseball. Yeah, 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 for sure. So hopefully you can get back in the league. You're getting your tattoos removed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that too as well. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, bro, I think you were already killing it. Why not get back into what you were good at in the first place? Yeah, for sure. And you can still do the music. I know you got unreleased shit with Yabby, Kinky, like a bunch yeah, of San yeah. artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anyone Definitely else in work particular with them, yeah. like – that you would be excited about working with? Um, shoot at basically everyone I mentioned. So, Hell yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> um, anything else you want to say uh, to the people before we get out of here? Shout out Colorblind having me on here. It's been an honor. Um, yeah, you guys should be expecting of some cool stuff happening in Dago soon. Yeah, yeah. More content with Twisty P on the way. For sure. I'm really excited. I really appreciate you, bro. And um, like, comment, and subscribe.